All right, it's party time, Mom. Welcome to another episode of Chad Pray the Show Monday. Um, I'm I'm not hungover. Hey. I'm still drunk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I uh, tequila. No more tequila for me. Yesterday was a Sunday to remember, but I don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was rough. That's why I didn't even get dressed today. I got my legs hanging out because I got the gout flare up. People were like, oh, you know, I hadn't had a gout flare up in a long time. Yeah. But I woke up this morning in my foot, just drinking that tequila, the brown stuff. Used to, it was the whiskey. The whiskey. I don't know that it's any of that, honestly, <laughs> anymore. It, it could be the garbage I eat. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But anyway, I hope everybody's having a good Monday. Taylor Hansen's on the couch as well as Sarah Gonzalez, the host of the News and Why It Matters. You guys uh, kind of gated up yesterday, didn't you? We did. You know, I was having <laughs> dinner Extremely with Steve gay. Helms. Yeah, Family Gay. I... <laughs> I, watch, I love that cartoon, The Family Gay. The, um, I was having dinner with Steve Helms, and he goes, man, you know, Sarah and all them, they go to these things, and it's so contentious. It just seems like a stressful way to live, always confronting people. And I said, well, that's why I'm here with you, and I sent them, right? <laughs> so you guys went to another family drag deal. Mm -hmm. That was at Anderson Distilling. Anderson Distillery. Anderson Distillery. In Roanoke, Texas. Roanoke, Texas. Mm -hmm. So one would think a bastion of conservative and traditional family values <laughs> it is on the it is on the fort worth side of dallas fort worth yeah so you would think one would think but anderson distillery anderson distillery let me say that one more time anderson distillery and is it a grill is it food there that kind there of thing there is food as well okay so mm -hmm. so anderson distilling anderson distillery bar and grill bar and grill it just in case they decided it was a good idea for business to host family Drag day. Now, let me go ahead and give you guys the disclaimer right up front. We don't care what drag people do until there's kids involved. Right. What you do as an adult, that's fine. What you do in your privacy, whatever you want. You want to rent out Anderson Distilling Bar and Grill and have an adult thing there? Whoop, knock yourself out. I'll come blow glitter on you. Happy, <laughs> happy that you're happy until it involves that. kids. Yes. Now, again, people will push back. Because I reposted in honor of this episode, I reposted my I Want to Be a Woman and Compete song. It's getting tons of traction. Again, it's probably at 2 million views overall, but it's wow. this morning I reposted it fresh, starting from zero, <laughs> put it on the Watch Chad Prather page, which of course is a Blaze Media page. And here comes the trans people. I mean, they're, I am so full of hate. Um, I'm okay with it until, uh, until you involve kids, right? <laughs> What happened? What What's going on? First of all, how'd you find out about this? How'd you guys find out about it? Um, so Chris actually, because it's so close to his home, he found out about it and sent it to me. I don't know. Oh, how is that how Chris yeah, found out? Yeah, yeah. Is Chris, that how Chris Cruz found out? Chris gave me a little tip. No, Chris, Chris says he just stumbled upon it, but let's be honest. He was <laughs> yeah, looking. Let's be honest. Yeah, Chris says, <laughs> oh, what I did there, oh I've, been, honest. I've been to drag shows before. I said, why does that not surprise me? He yeah. said he was concerned. He really just wanted to peek inside. <laughs> he wanted, yeah. He's so, a peeping Chris. Yeah. So, and and can I make a, a, just a distinction just for me? I would say uh, it's not that I don't care what people are doing if they want to go to a drag show. I don't care enough to do anything about it because it's their personal business. I do still find it odd that right. women are handing away their hard-earned money to grown men who are appropriating them. Which well, again, they're not even dancing either. Right, they yeah, literally yeah. were they're strutting. Just in, they were strutting in between tables. They weren't doing any like hard moves, and the women were just, just tossing out the dollar wow. bills, and it just so was you can weird. say that as a woman. Yeah, I, I've taken things from women forever, so I can't really, <laughs> you know. So here I is mean, some footage of it. It's playing while we're talking. So those of you who are listening by way of podcast, you you need to go watch it at least on YouTube. Um, and see this. So, uh, look, so here are some uh, drag queens. They're hugging on some. They're taking pictures with and hugging on some children. These children look to be about I don't know fifth grade. Still believe in Santa Claus. Still, yeah. yeah, that age. And uh, the um, there's a lot of kids there actually. Mm -hmm. um, Easily over twenty. I'm looking at these people, and you know these folks. You don't know what to expect when you look at a video like this. Like I'm seeing this for the first time. Chris sent me a lot of stuff yesterday, but I'm looking at this and. Wow, that's a fat one. That's a really fat one. <laughs> See, so apparently that one's actually a woman. That's yeah. a woman? We, I mean, you couldn't tell? 
Well, it looks like one of those current Abercrombie and Fitch models. They all, <laughs> they all look so hideous. It's it's really hard to to tell. But give, uh, give, we were we give were her a, told. give her a year well, and um and she'll be on the something cover I, of Sports I haven't seen a lot of people talk about is this little kid right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it definitely was autistic yes. or on the spectrum or something. I mean, and it's just bringing your child to one of these shows. You know, having a normal healthy child that's bad enough but then when you expose a child like this yeah. to drag queens i mean look at how excited he's getting he literally has a toy that's his safe space and yeah. they're doing this in front of him yeah and that kid looked to be about 12 13 years mm-hmm. old still believes in santa claus that's a metric to use <laughs> It, and can I just say that was not the only young person there who appeared mm-hmm. to be on the spectrum. Yep. Okay. So I think that's a thing that's emerging. We've heard that a lot mm-hmm. at these things. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it's just, it's, it's obviously a trend that they're taking these kids who are on a spectrum and they're on the spectrum and they're influencing them in this way. Mm-hmm. Uh, where do I want to go with this? So this this um, gets a lot deeper. This th- the fact that you look at this video and you go, well, I, I, these don't look like wild eyed radical people that are sitting in these chairs watching this these drag queens, right? These are normal everyday folks that you'd see in Roanoke, Texas, that are at this thing, like you know somebody you might run into at the restaurant. This is not. I, I, and I say that because I think people have this perception that when you go to something like this, it's, it's, you're going to see these wild-eyed people out there that are dressing flamboyant. You expect to see RuPaul. Everybody's RuPaul, right? Yeah. That's not the way this is. No. This is your normal, everyday people that you, know, you go to the office with, you may go to church with them, I don't know. Um, and Chris texted me and he said... Uh, Taylor's on it. He's because you sent me a picture. You were in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> you were smoking hot, by the way, with the glasses and the hat. And the, dip, the makeup was different. Look at Sarah. You remind me of a Republican gubernatorial Michigan candidate, Tudor Dixon, in these pictures. You looked a lot like Tudor. Our good friend Tudor Dixon. You looked a lot like Tudor Dixon in the because I kept seeing the pictures and yeah. You know how I feel about Tudor. She's a beautiful woman. Um, the uh, anyway, so and that was Taylor next to me. That's Taylor. It's so because he it was said, actually I don't Jenny. Know. It was Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> was it? It was. Yeah, you were Jenny yesterday. Jenny. Put that picture back up there one more time. So um, Chris texted me and said, "That's a good disguise, Taylor. I would have never known, dude. Would've you know never what's known. funny? I um I texted that to uh, Gaston, the president of of Blaze, and he he couldn't. He goes." Who is that? The eyes look familiar, but I can't. I know I know this Funny. person, but I can't tell who it is. Who is that? And I had to tell him. You guys should have saw the skirt. The skirt is where it was you really at. Up, huh? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. Well, the, the whole thing that you know, because I've done the undercover stuff with Antifa, you know, BLM, the riots. But the whole thing that I love about this community, you know, doing it in this community, is because it's all based on not asking questions. So it is, you can dress, you know, like RuPaul Drag's Race. I mean, yeah. my outfit is ridiculous to any normal person's eyes. You look at that person and you're like, what the hell's going on here? Yeah. But when you go to these events, you don't ask any questions. You're normalized. Oh, yeah. Well, and, and actually celebrated, too. I mean, the amount of compliments that I get at every single one of these events, I can't imagine how dumb these people feel once all this footage comes out afterwards and they realize they were complimenting me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's interesting. And you, you, Chris texted me and he said, I don't think Taylor's going to get in because there's so much Antifa out here. And I'm like, what the hell's Antifa doing at the drag show? Mm-hmm. But they were there. Not only there, they were armed. Yes. They were there in force. I yes. haven't seen them that heavily armed since 2020, mm-hmm. since the riots of 2020, the summer of yeah. love. Which again, um, <clears throat> you know, and we talk about this some more, but Chris pointed out that they had snipers in the parking garage uh off in the distance there's chris's tweet you could see it there he's got the point to where now chris turn your microphone on how how did you know they they were up there they were up there because uh i realized that when i parked in the parking garage antifa was coming out of the parking garage and i looked up and on that picture the tweet you'll see the third floor right in that corner there's two antifa people uh with weapons and then after this whole thing happened uh Taylor confirmed to me that when he was driving in, there's a group of six Antifas on the third floor with guns just waiting. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I pulled in six of them right in front of me, all with AR 15s, and I said, Oh, shit. I'm going <laughs> to get on out of here <laughs> I'm now. Gonna, I'm going to park them too. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
A lot to say about that. Look, I don't care if if they were carrying AR-15s or long rifles. I mean, I I, I believe in that. I think mm-hmm. you, you you can be armed in public. That's a different story. When you're in a sniper's nest, so to speak, and you're sitting up there, that's where again we start to have a problem. Mm-hmm. And it's always that one next step that they're going to take that is just wrong, right? right? See, people think we have a problem with all of this stuff because they, Chris caught hell for posting that and said, well, I thought, you know, the right to bear arms was something you <laughs> supported. Well, we do support that. Yeah, I find it fascinating that um, these people are totally fine with armed security for drag events, but not armed security for our schools. For the schools, mm-hmm. yeah. There, there's a lot of stuff to unpack there. I mean, when Chris sent me the picture and the video, of the armed Antifa guys across the street were from where he was. I was like, you know, these guys can go to the Army Navy store and dress up all they want. You can mm-hmm. still tell they're they're weak yes. beta males well, underneath there, even though they're holding so a rifle. So yes. this, this Antifa group, this John Brown Gun Club, is they do training. And they have videos of their training. And let <laughs> oh, me tell you, that, that's <laughs> it so is good. entertaining. These people, they <laughs> yeah. don't know what they're doing. No. And, you know, I'm, I'm all for the Second Amendment, but when you show up to protect kid diddlers, yeah, I mean, that's a little bit different. It's a whole thing. I mean, when you've got, you know, you're got armed security there, basically, that's what I'm calling them. That's you, what you, they called it. I mean, look, they at, said look this at this is what video. Community... Look at this video. This is like the little fat kid on the end there. I mean, look <laughs> at these guys. I'm like, I, dude, I, I get you got a rifle, but... Let me tell you something, dude. You you, you better know what you're doing in They've a situation. They've never done strength and conditioning a day in their no, life. <laughs> no. Um, they're not passing any PT tests. Uh, well, and I Which actually, is what they typically do. Yeah, it was very sweet. They they offered to escort me back to my car Aww. afterwards. And I you know, I politely declined, had a great conversation, you know, told them how much I loved the show and you know, it was a very beautiful thing that they showed up to protect the community and they just ate it up. Hey, I bet they did. <laughs> I bet they did. Well, you know, they're anti-fascists and um, they're, they're there to protect. <laughs> it's, I'm, I, there's so much here that, I mean, you have, you have a drag show, children are involved. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it amazes me that people defend this, mm-hmm. but then you have people there who are actually defending with, with guns. Well, with in Antifa rifles. right I mean, now, they're, they're little henchmen. They're all freaking out on Twitter because there was one guy on the other side that had, you know, a Negan-style baseball bat with yeah. wire wrapped around it that was just standing there to look menacing. And they're freaking out about that, but it's okay that they were all heavily yeah. armed surrounding a, the building and sitting up in the sniper's perch. So were there, I heard there, there was some Proud Boy presence there yes. as mm-hmm. well. Yes. They were there. So. Not a ton. Not there was a, not a ton of protesters, period. Yeah. Um, let me tell you, the overflow for the people who were waiting to get inside to watch the show was much, much larger. And that, that's, you know, uh, that doesn't count the max capacity, mm-hmm. over max capacity venue was that was already crammed full. capacity, I think. Already crammed full. So they were over the fire capacity. Correct. Mm-hmm. And which was, which was admitted to me twice. Taylor heard it as well. Yep. Um, we called the police. Chris, I had Chris call the police uh, to call it in nobody the police did nothing Mm -hmm. and um the the amount of people in the overflow just waiting to get in to get a glimpse of the drag show far 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 outnumbered any of the protesters i would say like 10 times that yeah nobody nobody showed it was about like 10 times the amount of people waiting in the overflow area than the protesters on the opposite side of the street so do you think they're just showing up to like blend like we're gonna just out and out show the support well and most of them they aren't from the area that's mm-hmm. most of the people I talk to. They're not. They don't live in Rockwall. They don't live in the. I mean, any areas surrounding Roanoke or anything. Most of them are going to be from Dallas or from other areas, and they yeah. just drive right in. Well, except especially all, except Antifa. all the teachers. Yep, ex- except the teachers that all work at ISD. We're going to talk about that in the next segment because I want to give it some time um, because there were some teachers there, mm-hmm. and there were some people there that you ought to be questioning why they're there, right? Um, so. I'm breaking Why are you things breaking here. Things? I know. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Chad's so mad, he's just gonna break things. I don't know. I, I, there's. <laughs> I, I'm. I got questions biscuit. I want to ask, but I, I don't have time yeah. to do it in this segment. Yeah. So I'm. I got. All right. Let's just go to the break. Uh, folks, listen. I want you to stock up on the emergency survival food. I want you to do it right now. It's the best time to do it. And I'm going to get you some savings from my Patriot Supply. But you got to do it now because the sale's going to end really soon. First thing you do, go to preparewithchad.com, and you'll save $250 on a ready hour three-month emergency food kit. That's $250 off. That's the lowest price in three years. 
So the Ready Hour Kit provides you with the breakfast, lunches, dinners, drinks, snacks, over 2,000 calories a day. Every family, you're going to need it soon, folks. Uh, don't waste any time. Order yours at the price they have now before it goes away. My Patriot Supply, they are the nation's largest preparedness company. Last year, they, uh, they bought in bulk to prepare for inflation, and now they're passing that savings on to you with this discount on the uh, most popular Ready Hour kit. So go to preparewithchad.com, save $250 per kit, plus get free shipping. When you're ready for real preparedness, trust Ready Hour Foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to preparewithchad.com today. That's preparewithchad.com today, and we'll be right back. All right, so um, talk about the teacher in a minute. Did you uh, get hit on? I did. You did when you were in the dress? So this happens at every the, single skirt right child there. drag <laughs> event I go to. I mean, I look good. I will say in my defense, you I know, I'd it. probably hit on myself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I had a guy come up to me in a, in a zip-up dress and, you know, introduce himself. And of okay. course, you know, yeah, I'm Jenny. Pleasure to meet you. I think his name was Tyler. And uh, yeah, he definitely wanted to take me home with him, and it got it got it got real awkward for a minute. But I was able to deflect enough, and you know, said, "Hey, it's a pleasure to meet you." And then I got the hell out of there, <laughs> dude. Sometimes you got to take one for the team. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> hey, it doesn't count, right? Because I'm undercover. Yeah, so. undercover. You're yeah. Gonzo journalist. It's not you're, gay you're when you're undercover. You're not investigative at all. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, I'm glad you got out of that unscathed. <laughs> um. Well, okay, you and you get you get criticized for taking videos of children, right? I mean, the the amount of gaslighting that is uh, that is happening here. So many people telling Taylor and I that we are uh, well. You're secretly taking videos of little children. Who's who's the pedo? Who's the pedophile? You guys are are pretty sick to do that. As if the whole point isn't to expose what the left is doing to our children and yeah. how they are indoctrinating them. <clears throat> um, <laughs> This happens at every single show that I cover, too, is you get the community up in arms and then they just accuse you of what they're guilty of. Right. That, well, that seems to be the M.O. all the way across the board, everything today uh, with the re-rees. Um, it, you obviously get accused, oh, you're here to protest, but you're wearing a dress. Yeah. Well, you you have to go incognito. You yeah. have to wear a disguise. And you know, I'll get recognized within a few seconds if yeah, I they don't. Hate they, you. They, yeah, they, they're, they're not not a very big fan of me to say the least. Can I say the most amazing part of uh, Taylor being there was when he was able. He was so incognito that he was able to take a selfie with the drag queens. <laughs> so who that's hate a tradition. Him. They every hate him. every single event, I I take a picture or multiple pictures with those who hate me, which. <laughs> They, they had yeah, no idea who they were it's taking always, the picture It with. always turns out great. They, yeah. they don't question it until afterwards, and then they feel like idiots. Yeah. <laughs> well, and feeling. then you, at the last one, you, you were telling me, weren't you, the bartender was, you know, saying something to the mom. They had, like, three moms around mm -hmm. the kid, and the kid kept going, I'm not gay. And she's like, he's gay. Yeah. Yep. Right? So people are going, oh, it's just entertainment. This is not entertainment, folks. This is... This is sexualization of children. This is it's exposing them to, to sexualization. It's also children who don't care to be there. Mm -hmm. Right. You can you can see a lot. There were there were maybe what, well, I mean, one I or saw two one, that, that in were that happy. video that we've played over and over again. Like roll this beautiful beam footage. Uh, is the kid one kid playing with a Rubik's playing, cube? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, playing with blocks. Yeah, Taylor saw one that was playing on a what Nintendo? Yeah, yeah, playing on a Nintendo, tablet. or at least seemed like a Nintendo or a tablet. Which is she was literally sitting there on the bench after she was flashed by a male dressed as a woman. Yeah, hopped on the table and showed him her giblets. And uh, yeah, no, they just, I'd say like 95% of the kids in attendance in these shows usually aren't interested at all in being there. Yeah. And then the other 5%, they have mental problems. Yeah. And it's, I mean, essentially the parents are just forcing them into it and saying, hey, look at how fun this situation is. And I know there was one video you sent me where the lady's screaming across at the protesters and she's flipping everybody mm -hmm. off. Her son's there mm -hmm. and the son starts flipping them mm -hmm. off and she tries to lean over and kiss him. And he's like pulling away from her. Mm -hmm. And then while she's driving out, she flops a titty out. Yep. Yep. <laughs> well, I actually I overheard I mean, it was a highly abusive conversation that yeah. between those two, between the mom and the kid. And, you know, he was sitting there and he was upset because of the protesters across the street. She's like, you know, you don't have to be upset. You can't let them intimidate you um, from being who you are. And he said, he literally said, like, I don't even know who I am. And I'm mm. sitting there. I'm like, hmm. And she says, you're a tween. He said, you're a tween kid and you're going to get through this. He says, you need to stand up for yourself. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, this kid literally just said he doesn't know who he is. And your mom is 
still yeah. pushing this. And then I, she ends up flashing her titties while he's in the passenger seat. Yeah. I am, I'm really actually concerned about that one in particular because the mom appeared to be under the influence of something. She couldn't hold her balance. And the son, it wasn't just the kiss that she tried to do. Mm-hmm. At the very beginning, she's she's hanging with her arm around him and he's he's going like this trying to back away right. that combined with because you could say all right well any preteen or teen boy you know maybe doesn't want their mom hanging all over them but it was that combined with the fact that she felt perfectly mm-hmm. comfortable exposing her breasts while he's in the passenger well, and not seat. just exposing it but wagging it yeah she was like literally it. just right that's a, that's a violent <laughs> wow, titty wag. it was it was a violent titty <laughs> wag it was violent very floppy it was very floppy too yeah. um so just the, the the idea that she just as a mom uh, the idea that she would feel so comfortable to do that with her son sitting right next mm-hmm. to her combined with the way that she was acting around him and the physical affection that he clearly was backing away from um i'm really concerned no, about it's, that yeah that she, she's 100 percent abusing him i mean he did not want to be there yeah. he was embarrassed to be there he, he was worried about the protesters he was worried about everyone staring at him and he just didn't want I to wonder, be anywhere there i wondered if that was why he was wearing a mask honestly because mm-hmm. she wasn't wearing a mask oh, no so one i was. wondered why he he would be wearing the mask and i thought to myself he well, might just he, not want to be seen he actually didn't have the mask on the entire time either when i first encountered him when they had that conversation mm-hmm. he didn't have a mask on Interesting. so so mm-hmm. let's talk about you guys encountered a teacher we both encountered several teachers Multiple several teachers, teachers. I, I was sitting next to a public school teacher and he had his own conversations with the teachers so again uh, people choose to believe that this kind of way of thinking is not existing in our public schools but here they are right mm-hmm. i mean so you guys encountered what happened you got it there's a teacher are we legally allowed to play it one party Let's consent. Do it. Well, I'm a teacher at Keller ISD, and they're, they've, you know, taken over our school board, and they're trying to pull any LGBTQ book off of you know, the shelves of the library, anything about marginalized peoples at all. And and their their goal is to is to shut down critical thought. It really is. They're fear mongering. They don't even know. Like they don't even know what they don't know. So, I bet none of them have ever been to a drag show before. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> Like pure entertainment, and, and and it's been in the culture. Like you know, it's Saturday Night Live, Bugs Bunny, like Bugs Bunny. Yeah, um, Bugs, Bugs Bunny, Bunny is did drag. wear a dress from time to time, you know, in the cartoon. But that's she's like the, the, these people don't have aren't cultured, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, this Keller ISD. Yes, the the gentleman that I was sitting next to was also a teacher in Keller ISD, and. It, that one was a weird one just offhand because it was a, a man who was married to a woman who also used to teach in Keller ISD, but he was there by himself hmm. to come watch the drag show and asked his wife to come and she didn't go. And I had some questions offhand about that, but he was saying the ex- it's like they get the same talking points that they repeat because mm-hmm. he was saying the same things as this woman. These right wing nut jobs um, are infiltrating our schools and these parents think that they're just allowed to tell us what we teach. Yeah. I mean, it was the same talking points over and over. There was another woman who uh, we got during one of the games that they were playing who was on stage who said that she was a teacher, to which the drag queen responded that he also used to be a teacher. And he asked uh, if there were any other teachers in the room. And he, the response he got was it's just insane. raucous applause. Well, I mean, there was over mm-hmm. a dozen teachers from the same school district from ISD in that building. And later Ke- on in that... Ke- yeah, Keller ISD. Yeah, Keller ISD. And, I mean, later on in that audio, I mean, the... Uh, the, the teacher that I was talking to, she teaches middle school, by the way. And she said that, you know, the good majority of teachers were there. And some of them had to take down posts promoting the event and stuff because they were getting trolled online by right wing groups and basically trying to be shamed out of it. But she said, you know, there's countless teachers in attendance here. Mm. It's like, I, I really do wonder how many teachers are in attendance and why are you going to something like that as a teacher? You guys can tell how uh, reserved I am today. On, I, and I have to be because I want to come unglued mm-hmm. with this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um you know, somebody said to me the other day in a sent me a message and said, they said, I'd really like to I like you, but I want to hit you upside the head because you keep telling people to get kids out of school. And I'm like, they, they're like, we got to take it back. I was like, it never belonged to us. Mm-mm. The public school system never belonged to us. It, it was set up 
as a system to promote socialism and Marxism. It was set up as a system to indoctrinate your kids mm -hmm. for the government to have control of your kids' brains and minds. Now we're seeing the sexualization of this thing happening. And I'm telling you, for the, in the name of convenience, we are sacrificing our children on an altar mm -hmm. of, of indoctrination and sexualization. And I could do a whole other Asians, whole other list of them, but it's happening. And, and the, this public school system never belonged to us. It never belonged to us. The government took it away from the family, took it away from the church, gave it over to you know these folks to run. And, and I'm telling you, you're right. They have the, t the talking points. Mm -hmm. They do. And, and they're going to do this and now they're gonna there this is all part of the process of normalizing this stuff so that your kids because again <clears throat> it's never far enough right you could take somebody so far once that gets normalized then you got to push it even further mm -hmm. it, it, it's so I, a point, perfect example is the whole damn alphabet they use to describe themselves right they, they got to keep adding letters because because lgb wasn't enough yeah it had to be LGBT, and then it had to be LGBTQ+, and then it had to be all these other things. You know, I, I don't, you know, it, it is never far enough. So they're going to normalize this. People, it, it, God knows. I mean, that could be your teacher that Taylor was talking, mm -hmm. your kid's teacher and Taylor was talking to. I mean, they're, they're also normalizing it to the extent that, you know, they went very, very far to make sure that they were promoting this as a family friendly drag event. They made a post that said that, uh, you know, they didn't there was there would be no foul language. There would be no explicit music. There would be no, uh, you know, no sexual content. Uh, there would be nothing that would prevent you from being able to take your child. It was just going to be wholesome, clean fun. But the fact of the matter is. Bringing a young child, an impressionable child, to a show where men, grown men, are wearing hideous looking makeup, mm -hmm. wearing women's clothing, is inherently not child friendly. It, it is the ultimate in objectifying a woman. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you are teaching these children that that's okay. You're mm -hmm. teaching the girls that it's acceptable. You're teaching the boys that this is right behavior. This is that women are an object. It's all in how you dress. It's all in how you make yourself up. All in how you walk. All in how you hold your hands. All in how you talk. It, the whole thing. That's not what a woman is. Well, it felt a lot more mischievous than even the other shows I've attended because of the music choice they chose. You know, I I honestly probably would have preferred it. They'd play regular music, but they're sitting there playing Hannah Montana tracks and mm. Disney songs. So it even appeals to these kids, getting them even more involved. I mean, yeah. if that's not grooming, I don't know what is. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a sexualized Disney dress up. I mean, you know, let's look at the princesses, that kind of thing. That's not what a woman is. It's not. That's people are like, why do you have a problem with Caitlyn Jenner getting Woman of the Year? Because not a woman. <laughs> I mean, that's inherent in the whole definition. Right. It's not a woman. So yeah, I kind of have a problem with that. And you start telling kids that this is normal. I got a problem with that. Well, and, and to mention, she, for it. The, the competitor that she, the person that she beat out for person of the year that year was a veteran who had both of his legs blown off. Yeah. So yeah, that's a little yeah. awkward. I mean, I love what, we got to go to break, but I love what Dave Chappelle says. Like if they said Eminem was black person of the year. Yeah. It's like, well, I don't <laughs> have a problem with that. Yeah. yeah. You know? Anyway, hang tight. Be right back. All right, it's that time again. Wax eloquent. I'll attempt to. Uh, if you got kids around, yeah, you know, maybe it's time to uh, push them out of the room, tell them to go to sleep, go outside and search the trees to fall out of. Just get them away from here for a second because <laughs> uh, I'm going to get a little kinky with you. Now, in McKinney, Texas, right down the road from where we were talking about in Roanoke, uh, and not too far away from where I'm sitting right now, there's been a little bit of a kerfuffle. Kerfuffle, I love that word. A disturbance in the force and upset of the educational apple cart. A dialogical Donnybrook, if you will. The official Instagram account of the Emerson High School counselors reposted an ad for what is surely every woman's favorite sex toy, the Empress 2 clitoral vacuum stimulator. Yeah, you heard me right. Now, if tomorrow morning you wake up and say to yourself, you know, I'd really like to test the limits of my comfortability and see what it takes to embarrass myself, just get yourself on a show like this one and say Empress 2 Clitoral Vacuum Stimulator on air. Now, if your face doesn't turn beet red, and I feel it a little bit, uh, 
you're probably going to be an excellent host here at Blaze TV. By the way, this is what was printed below the ad. It said, toys can help you overcome social anxiety. There's no shame in the self-love game. And it said, you won't know what you like best until you try it. Mm. Now, I don't know about the latter two statements, but I think I can pretty well confirm that the first one is bullshit. Yeah, every time I start feeling awkward in a gathering of people, I whip out my flashlight, and all of a sudden I'm the life of the party all over again. Anyway, the post got taken down almost immediately, of course, and the initial response from the school district was that the account had been hacked. And hey, who among us hasn't had their Instagram account hacked and used to hawk rubber dongs? And nevertheless, this excuse didn't hold water for very long because it turns out that it wasn't a hack. And uh, it was posted on purpose. Now, here's where things get interesting. They released the following statement, and I'm going to read it to you and see if you could spot the problem. Quote, over the past several days, district and campus administrators determined that a staff member reposted the content from another account, believing it to be content about self-care without actually reading the text of the post. Later, when the staff member realized their mistake, they removed the post and posted that the account had been hacked. When district and campus administrators learned that was not true, the entire account was disabled. We sincerely apologize for resharing the inaccurate post. We were attempting to respond quickly with what we believe to be true information. In the future, we will verify such posts from the district accounts prior to resharing them, In quote. So a couple of things. One, in the future, you're going to verify such posts before resharing them? How's about we leave the dildos out of the school social media account altogether? I mean, that's just an idea I've got. And the main thing, nowhere in their statement are the words, we've disciplined and or fired the person who did this and then tried to cover it up. Nowhere in there does it say clearly a person who could have possibly thought this was something that should be shared with children has no place in the school system at all, let alone in a counseling position. This school district has had several instances of things like this over the past couple of years. And to my knowledge, none of the people who perpetrated them have been fired. So what the hell, McKinney? Finally, because I'm a firm believer in the idea of circling back Jin Pisaki style, is somebody going to tell me what the hell is so wrong with the Empress One clitoral vacuum stimulator that they had to make a sequel? What happened to the Empress One? Inquiring minds want to know. Sarah? <laughs> oh, I was, I was about to take it over and say that the Empress One actually solved my social anxiety. <laughs> so that ad, I mean, I'd say it was, it was pretty accurate, but probably shouldn't be ran for school kids. But well, I will say, I, I Empress say, One, you guys, you guys are great. Whoever put that ad up there has so much stress <laughs> in their life that they are running the batteries dead on their Empress 2 right Don't now. Don't worry, Trust it's self-care. Yeah. I also would just uh, like to give just a little shout out of appreciation to Taylor for taking the uh, attention <laughs> off of me right Pulling there. the heat off of you. Because you knew as soon as I got done with that, I was coming straight yep. to you. Yep, sure did. I, I well, wanna... I'm wondering what my expert title is going to be today, but I think <laughs> yeah. that might go to Taylor this time. I want so. to know if, uh, if you had one. Because I... I don't, I don't know. I mean, do I, mean, I, do I actually mean, carry an mean, empress with mean, me when I go undercover every single time. How many I have? Now, That's the question. But isn't that, isn't that transphobic in some way? Isn't that sexist and transphobic? The fact that they are focusing on the clitoris. Yeah. I mean, doesn't everybody have a clitoris? <laughs> everybody Absolutely. can have a clitoris. Men have clitoris too. Clitori? Cl what, what is the, what is the, <laughs> what is the plural of clitoris? I had a clitoris yesterday, but not today. <laughs> you did. Yeah. <laughs> You know what? And, and so apparently last night, it. apparently last night I saw this. It popped on, up on Twitter. There was the VMAs, Video Music Awards. One, I didn't even know they still made videos. I didn't either. But Taylor Swift got video of the year and like four of the people who were nominated were women. And so in her acceptance speech, she said, I'm just excited. I'm paraphrasing. I'm excited that four of the directors of these videos were all women. Bigot. And she said, um, I'm thankful for what being a woman has made me. Now, that's a very bigoted statement that's very transphobic, yep. especially Disgusting. in light of the drama going on with Brittany Aldean, Jason, Jason, country music singer Jason Aldean's wife. When she posted a picture of her putting her makeup on, she wears a lot of makeup. She's got her makeup thing. She does her whole thing. She posts her video, and she says, I'm glad that when I went through my tomboy phase that my parents didn't decide to yeah. reassign me. And, you know, um, I'm, I, I love being girly or something yeah. like that. And, of course, Maren Morris and Cassidy Pope, who are also – Country singers, Maren Morris, of course, was part of the Texas music scene for a long time. She's from Fort Worth. Um, they jumped on her, calling her all these names. So if you're going to jump on her for saying, I don't think children should be transitioned, mm -hmm. that's basically her statement. She didn't say, you know, oh, you're so transphobic. She didn't say she hates trans people or anything else. She's just thankful that her parents didn't decide to right. 
right. give her surgery or hormone blockers. She, I love being girly. Well, then, in fairness, you needed to be jumping on Taylor Swift too, right? Mm-hmm. Because if Taylor Swift says, I love what being a woman has done for me, or that kind of thing, that's transphobic too, right? I mean, let's just use their rules. That offends me. It offends me too. And it should offend you, especially Absolutely. since you put your heart and soul into being mm-hmm. Jenny yesterday. <laughs> hey, Jenny. Jenny is one of my favorite alter egos, yeah. I will say. And I find it very funny that Cassidy Pope and Marin Morris, when they went to Nashville, decided it would help them sell their shitty music by taking their clothes off. So apparently they love being very girly too. Because I've never seen Marin Morris fully covered since she moved to Nashville. I mean, she's, she keeps it reasonably naked. All right? <laughs> and I don't know where that fits in country music, but apparently she loves her girly life as well. Isn't it also fascinating how the patriarchy is keeping these women down, or so they say, but also they're simultaneously admitting that they wouldn't be where they were at without the fact that they were a woman? I mean, they were a woman. That's right. It's fascinating. It is so fascinating. Hmm. And Caitlyn, Caitlyn Jenner, you can defend Caitlyn Jenner. I don't give a rat's ass what, what Caitlyn Jenner wears. He still has man hands. Hey, I Caitlyn know that. is a, Caitlyn is a brave like a conservative. Yes. You, don't talk, yeah. you don't talk poorly about but, Caitlyn. I, I can pick on Caitlyn. Caitlyn's free game because <laughs> the left hates him, right? But he's still, he's got man hands and he walks like a dude. He, I will never forget when we saw him at the a couple CPACs CPAC, ago. Yeah. And he, I sent, I know I sent you the video. You sent me the video. He walked past, and I was just like, <laughs> "It's a man, is man. A, that is a dude." And he was wearing flip. He wasn't even wearing the heels. He was no. wearing flip flops. Uh, not that I hate on flip flops because I'm wearing them today too. But and he just was like, just charging walking. on through. Yeah, he's got those broad shoulders, and you're just like, yeah. I've you seen Caitlyn. Not- I've seen Caitlyn's golf swing. It ain't a girl's golf swing. <laughs> well, hey, you know at saying. least he didn't want to hit you with his car. So it could have been worse. <laughs> could have been, but. I, we can pick on Caitlyn, like I'm like, look at what you took away from. Yes, you know, yeah. Look at this. It's like it takes so much away from women. You know, it takes so much away from women. And then of course, Joe Biden. Joe Biden is somewhere. He's drooling on the Constitution right now. <laughs> uh, Joe Biden. Let me pull it up. He said, and I would love to meet the person who tweets for Joe because it ain't Joe. Mm-hmm. It is not Joe Biden. I, I honestly you, wish they let Joe tweet for just one day. Uh, can you imagine? It would be so entertaining. But here's what Joe tweeted. He said, MAGA Republicans, that's the new thing they're doing now, yeah. is they're villainizing <laughs> Trump supporters. And uh, MAGA Republicans have awakened a powerful force in America, the women of this nation. These MAGA <sighs> Republicans don't have a clue about the power of women in America. They're about to find out. Y'all don't know what a woman is. <laughs> You, that's a very transphobic statement, Joe. Yes. Very transphobic. And again, I'm just using their rules. Mm-hmm. I'm using their standards. Well, they're not. You're not supposed to hold them to their own standards that they have for you. No, I mean, again, but it's a clown world we're living in. Mm-hmm. No pun intended for the drag show, but I mean, that's it's it's, it's, <laughs> a, it's a it's a clown world. They don't live. A, they don't even care about the logic no. behind what they're saying. No, just they got to be offended by something, pissed off. So here's what I've started doing. These people who come at me on social media, and I, a lot of trans people come at me because, again, the song that went viral, I want to be a woman and compete. You're just a bigot. I just share statements like that with them. And I'm like, is this the guy you voted for? Right. It's what he said. Yeah. So he doesn't care about you. He doesn't see you as a real woman. He doesn't. It, because you're not. <laughs> See, I, I'm just excited to, to have my first little baby boy because, oh, I'm going to be loaded. He's going to be the best and just the top competitor in women's sports. Yeah. He's well, going to be, he's it, gonna be listen, making loads. It's a surefire way. It's a surefire way to get ahead of the competition is to have a penis. You know, if you're, uh, you're going to compete, do it against women and have a penis. That is the patriarchy that and we're somebody facing. said to me, they said, well, if they're complying by NCAA rules, then it shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Well, you know, put them, turn them loose. Turn them loose. I, because, again, I've never seen a, a, a trans man get on the back right. of a bull yeah. at a rodeo. Yeah. So sports never, have never I've, been yeah, so entertaining. Yeah, there's a I've reason why a, it only goes one now, way. And again, don't get me wrong. I've seen some. I've seen some bareback. I've seen some girls, some females get on like bareback broncs. I've seen that. It doesn't end well. <laughs> um, they're tough. I wouldn't mess with those girls. But I, but you don't see a lot of, of of biological females that identify as men. Mm-hmm. You know, strapping on the pads or, or getting on the back of a bull or these guys. I mean, you're gonna let if the NCAA rules say that. A man can, you know, compete against a woman in wrestling, you know, and they do say that you're going to get some skulls cracked. But as long as the NCAA approves it, then we're okay. All right. Hang tight. Be right back. (music) 
Well, first of all, um, Sarah and Taylor and Chris, thank you for going and being there. Yeah, uh, you're welcome. I got to tell you. I am not. No one else the, is doing um, it. Nobody. That's that. I am not. I won't even the, get started. Uh, mental stability to be in that environment. <laughs> I'm just not. I, 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 I have a very strong passion when it comes to defending kids and um, I, unborn, whatever. I, I just have a very strong passion. So that's why I just said I, I got to be real subdued when I talk about this. Well, can, I get pretty fired up. Can I tell you that this one in particular, um, people often ask, where are the where are the fathers? They were here. Mm -hmm. They were at the event. Yeah. They were they were participating. They were sitting. I by. I saw that from the video. They, they were, were smiling by, and taking pictures. Sitting by while their children were exposed so to this tipping to the drag queens. It's so confusing to me. Why you would want this? Why you would promote this? Why you would defend this? Mm -hmm. Chris, is there anything we left out? On um, hey, don't we have a picture of that ISD teacher? <laughs> okay, can't show that. Can't do that. Wow, Taylor going for the jugular. Um, I will say this: I had a mother who was part of the big push to to remove the gender uh, confusing books from the Keller ISD libraries. Mm -hmm. Reach out to me and ask me for more information on the teachers, and that information has been provided to her. Good. So they will be rooting out these teachers Good. and the um, parents will know who they are. Uh, well. Chad, we got to people need to show up. Th do. This is this is the biggest this is the biggest takeaway. When there's more in the overflow to bring their children to this and there is more Antifa showing up to defend this than there are protesters. And by the way, the protesters who were there were weak. I'm sorry. I mm -hmm. I know the organization is means well, but the protesters were weak. They had no energy. I couldn't even, they weren't even, they were just standing around holding signs. The fact that there wasn't a group of dads in this community who decided to go in and disrupt the event and yell these people down is absolutely reprehensible. None of that happened. The, the dads people, that were there were there to enjoy it. There were no dads, there were no families that, well, I should say there were no parents who came to stand up. And I thought to myself, guys, I know you're busy, okay? Everyone's busy, but I'm busy too. I'm the mom, okay? I'm a mom, I've got two boys at home, I run three businesses and I do this full time for a living and I found the time to show up and expose this mm -hmm. crap. Why the hell can't you? Mm -hmm. And the people that were reporting on it from our side, they need to understand that there's more than just trying to grab and trying to uh, make the crowd go like instigate because that's all I saw mm -hmm. was the people that were trying to do some investigative work like we were doing, like we were three of us, I was outside, them two weren't inside, we we're communicating at all times. Everybody else that was reporting on it, all they were doing was instigating both sides. Mm -hmm. That's not how you report on that. You sit back, you let it happen, and next time, both organizations that were there to protect the kids, y'all need to do a lot better because it was weak and it was embarrassing what y'all did. It would, did not help anything on trying to remove this from a town that is three miles from my house. Mm -hmm. It and was I will, embarrassing. I will say that this this organization is that they are, you know, they, they have good intentions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but every time they show up to events like this, I mean, almost every single time is they're instigating, you know, they, they can't keep control of the Proud Boys or whoever's with them, and it just turns into a big piss battle. And they're yeah, always outnumbered. It. I mean, and they just, they don't know what to do. They don't yeah. know how to properly protest or to actually form a crowd. They, they don't really know how to do any of this. Yeah. But, the, but the idea that, that people in the community were not doing that independently mm -hmm. is extremely troublesome to me. I mean, guys, if you can't get out and go protect the children of the community by stopping this event, how in the world do you think that you're going to keep your state red? Yeah. 90%. By the way, Roanoke, 90% Republican voted on the last mayor, what are we, whatever you call the, the mayor race. 90% Republican. Hmm. Well, and by the way, Mayor, your staff from the city council was there too participating. Oh, and you know what else was happening at this event that I found fascinating? Someone with um, uh, a voting organization, mm -hmm. a Democrat voting organization, was passing out flyers that had uh, information about voting. And then on the backside of it, it was a nice little uh, summary of all of the people that they needed to vote for, uh, you know, Beto downstream. And they were asking people to take pictures of the flyers to make sure that they had all yeah. of the information they needed to go vote. Uh, I mean, but it tells you everything about the emphasis and the, and the right. what the other side wants. Right. Well, and, but you know what? They're organized as hell, so they might just get their way. Mm -hmm. What yeah. are we doing? Yeah. 
sitting around with our thumbs up our asses. Yeah. No one want no one wants to participate. No one wants to help. Well, only a few people like us can make so much of a difference. Yeah. And then you but the thing is is anyone can do this. You can literally I mean that's how I got into journalism, that's how I got into <coughs> undercover stuff. I woke up one day, saw a video that made me feel sick. And then I went and did something. I mean, yeah. literally anyone is capable of doing this but, work. But 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 we need the dads in mm -hmm. there asking questions. I said, why why is there not why are there not dads all over this place? Every ten minutes, a dad gets up and starts trying to stop the event from happening. Why why do we why do we not have that? I'm not saying break any laws. I'm not saying get violent. I'm saying make a make a difference so that these parents think twice before they take their children there because mm -hmm. it's so unenjoyable for everyone. Right. Why did why why were there no dads doing yeah. that? And that's that's the thing is is well, first of all, like this particular event, I didn't even know was happening until you guys were there. Yeah. I didn't know it was even happening. Um but what this tells me is that you go to the one where they had drag your kid to whatever mm -hmm. the one they drag had a few months ago yeah. yep. and that was in dallas yep. yes it's so, yeah and so now this one it sounds to me was even a bigger event but it, it, regardless of the numbers of people there it was more in your face like yeah. by god we're bringing kids and we're going to mm -hmm. show you that we're bringing kids mm -hmm. it was i would say it was less sexual Oh, absolutely. But right. but it was more I, I in your see face. That too. More in your face of we're making this family we're friendly. Going and we're to gonna, do this with kids. And they said they it will be a it will be a regular thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my my thing is when we know that's going to happen because like I said I didn't know it was happening until y'all were sending me pictures from it because mm -hmm. I sent you a text about something totally unrelated and I got you know undercover <laughs> undercover Sarah picture back. Um, it, we should be mobbing that place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, there should be a thousand patriots that show up at that thing and and just say not gonna happen yeah you're not gonna enjoy this right chad i think we need a group of bikers there was two bikers that were assaulted that night that day and they were furious that they were assaulted mm -hmm. they were spit on on their face right literally in front of me and i thought that's it that's what's going to get the bikers from downtown <sighs> up here that's what we need we need like a bikers dad just storm all this and scare all these leftists away well it's getting real folks i mean that's the bottom line yeah. it's getting real it's getting there throwing it in your face uh they they know they the left knows they're getting their asses kicked in every poll that's out there they don't care they're still gonna throw it in your yes. face because mm -hmm. they're not scared of us they're not scared of anybody that claims to be a conservative um and we got to change that hang tight be right back All right, during the break, uh, real quick, I just found out that the uh, pastor, quote-unquote, at First Christian Church in Katy, Texas, is hosting a drag show for kids. <gasps> That's supposed to be September 24th at 5 p.m. So there you go. I'll get more information Dads, for you. Dads, where are you at? More information for you. Uh, subscribe, blazetv.com slash Chad. Use promo code Chad. Go to watchchad.com for all the fun stuff is. I'll be in Conroe, Texas, Saturday night at uh, Southern Star Brewing. Uh, we will not be having a drag show, that's for sure. Uh, but anyway, um, we'll talk more about this tomorrow. I love you. God bless you. Talk to you then. Stand up, dads. Bye.